Welcome to the Centre for Anaesthesia podcast series. In this podcast, we're going to be talking about pre-assessing patients for an anaesthetic and taking a step-by-step approach to the pre-operative consultation. At the pre-operative visit, you need to efficiently gather a large amount of information about your patient. You should take into account the patient's medical condition, type and urgency of surgery, and the patient's wishes before formulating your plan for the anaesthetic. This is also an important time for the patient to be able to ask questions and for you to provide reassurance about the forthcoming procedure. We recognise that not all of this can be done on the morning of surgery. In some cases, we'll require information from other hospital specialists, for example cardiologists or respiratory physicians, or wait for the results of special investigations such as echocardiography or cardiopulmonary exercise testing before coming to a decision about how best to proceed with surgery. We identify patients who require further investigation in the pre-operative assessment clinic. Mm -hmm. Some patients can be pre-assessed via a telephone consultation, whereas some will require a face-to-face consultation with an anaesthetic doctor. This is the anaesthetic pre-assessment sheet that we use at UCH, and I'm going to talk you through how I use it during a pre-operative visit. Firstly, It's important to find out if there's been a problem with a previous anaesthetic or whether there's a problem with anaesthetics that might run in the family. Post-op nausea and vomiting are common problems and we can modify the anaesthetic to minimise this. I then ask about medical problems. It's important to be thorough here but pay special attention to cardiorespiratory symptoms and disorders. It's also really important to get an idea of the patient's functional status. Questions such as can you climb a flight of stairs in one go, gives helpful information about cardiorespiratory function and how well an anaesthetic might be tolerated. Also, do ask about potential pregnancy in women of childbearing age, as some of our anaesthetics drugs may be harmful to the unborn child. I then move on to drug history. This can sometimes provide information about medical problems that may have been missed during previous questioning. It also allows us to identify any drugs that might influence our anaesthetic technique. For example, some antiplatelet agents are a contraindication to a spinal anaesthetic. It's crucial to identify allergies before giving any medication. As we give almost all our medications intravenously in anaesthesia, the consequences of not being aware of an allergy can be fatal. Checking a patient's risk of aspiration comes next. Ask about when they last had anything to eat or drink and also if they suffer with gastric reflux. The guidelines for pre-op starvation are shown here, but in summary, six hours for solids and two hours for clear fluids. Remember to consider any acute or chronic conditions that might cause the patient to have delayed gastric emptying and therefore a higher risk of aspiration. As many of our airway devices are passed orally, there's a chance that we might cause damage to teeth during the insertion. Ask your patient about loose teeth caps and crowns, and be sure to avoid these during your anaesthetic. I routinely consent all my patients for potential dental damage just in case. Consideration of the airway is also vital before starting the anaesthetic. There are reminders shown on this chart which can help identify the difficult airway. Mal and Patty score, neck movement, mouth opening and jaw protrusion are commonly used. Think about whether mass ventilation may be a problem or whether intubation will be the problem or maybe both will be difficult. Airway assessment is a good topic of discussion when you're in theatres. Have a look through the patient's recent blood tests and any other special investigations. Now is a good time to consider whether you need more information or further investigation. Is it correct to delay surgery whilst waiting for this? Will it change your management? Or does the clinical situation demand that the procedure be done immediately? At the end of the assessment, we grade the patient according to the American Society of Anesthesiologists classification system. The categories are displayed on screen and are used to provide an indication of perioperative risk. Finally, discuss your plan for the anaesthetic with the patient. Ask for their consent on the risks of any techniques you plan to use and answer any questions that they may have. Your reassurance is really important at this stage. Here's an example of a chart that's been filled in by me. Thanks very much for listening to our podcast. You can find more information on our website at www.
ucl.ac.uk forward slash anaesthesia. Do get in touch if you have any questions or would like to suggest a topic for a future podcast.